New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has again declared victory over the coronavirus. She said restrictions in Auckland would be lifted after no new cases were confirmed for 10 days. New Zealand appeared to stamp out the virus back in May, but a new outbreak hit Auckland in August. And Iceland has introduced new restrictions following a spike in infections there. The latest wave of infections is thought to be much higher than earlier this year. Bars, clubs and gyms all shut down gatherings of more than 20 people now banned. Well, the World Health Organization is describing Italy as an example of uh, best practices in dealing with the coronavirus. WHO officials are praising government policies and the discipline shown by the Italian public. DW's Georg Mathis has been to Milan to find out how a city once at the epicenter of that country's outbreak is coping now. She lived through the Spanish flu, the two world wars, and now she survived COVID-19. Fatima Negrini is 108 years old. During the first wave of the coronavirus in Italy, she watched many friends in her nursing home die. I've been through so many things in my life and I'm still here. It looks as if Jesus Christ doesn't want me. Care homes were hard hit in the early stages of the pandemic, when Milan was at the epicenter of the outbreak. More than half of the 33,000 lives lost to COVID-19 in Italy were here, in the city and the surrounding Lombardy region. Vanda Gatti, a volunteer with the White Cross, provided emergency support during the most acute stage of the crisis. She captured some impressions of the chaos on her phone. We lived in a very traumatic experience, like a tsunami, something that uh, in, at the moment arrived and changed completely everything. So, so from that moment, uh, we changed our behavior, our uh, approach uh, to the life. People are legally obliged to wear masks in all crowded places from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. And many also keep theirs on during the day. Another reason infection rates are rising slowly is the long-term effect of Italy's harsh lockdown, which kept people confined to their homes for months on end. Professor Maria Rita Gismondo says there's no magic formula for other countries to follow. Italy is not perfect, and it certainly can't go it alone. I think an important thing is to think at the European health, to have the same protocol of therapy, the same to exchange experiences, the same quarantine, not just the localized health, but just but an European strategy to face the viruses. The professor also has high hopes for a rapid testing scheme the government plans to roll out in schools. That's good news for Matteo and his sister Vittoria. They started class only two weeks ago and don't want to go back to homeschooling. I hope we can soon take off the masks and get a bit closer to each other without having to keep our distance all the time. This cemetery is a bitter reminder of Milan's collective trauma. The 128 people laid to rest here were brought here from overcrowded hospitals and morgues. Relatives who may not have been able to claim bodies because of the tough quarantine restrictions or because they were sick themselves can move their loved ones from here to other parts of the cemetery within a period of two years for sanitary reasons. March and April 2020 changed the north of Italy forever. Though public support for ongoing restriction remains high, many now fear the approaching winter. And we have some breaking news coming in. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen says she is self-isolating until Tuesday after she attended a meeting with someone who tested positive for coronavirus. She said she tested negative last Thursday, but would be testing again today. And we'll have more details as they come in. Let's get you up to speed now on some of the other developments in the pandemic. New York Mayor Bill de Blasio is seeking to close all non-essential businesses and schools 
in nine neighborhoods that have been identified as virus clusters. Up to 500,000 people could be affected by the proposed shutdown. The French capital Paris is being placed on maximum alert for two weeks to curb a new rise in infections there. Bars will remain closed. Restaurants will have to implement stricter sanitary protocols. The new measures take effect Tuesday in the Philippines. Some 25 million students have started classes at home. President Duterte has ordered schools to remain shut until a vaccine becomes widely available.